Hello guys, I'm Craig McLean and welcome back to this new episode of the Mini Cooper S Partial Restoration. In this episode, I'm going to be looking to get some of the new panels fitted into the car like you've seen. A couple more fitted in and get some strength back into the car. Because I don't like the idea of the car being all flimsy, uh, not having much strength in that back end. So that's the main aim in this episode, is to get some strength back into the car. So let's get cracking. Well guys, it's actually Christmas Eve. I'm not working on the car today, but I've decided, because we're taking a load of cardboard to the cardboard recycling, so I'll get this new boot floor unboxed. So that's the start of this episode. Welcome to episode three, uh, and let's get this boot floor unboxed, ready for the new year. And there we go. One absolutely beautiful, faultless pressing. What a lovely job that's gonna make. All that rot out. One piece of fresh steel with no joints. Just the way I love to do it. Well, guys, it's only the 28th of December, but I've got a bit of a spare day today. Wife's out, going for a meal. So I thought, right, I feel like all I've done for the last week and a bit is sit on my ass and achieve absolutely bugger all. Whereas this has been on my mind about getting this boot floor in. So I've decided today just to have an easy day. But first of all, I'm going to get it in. No preparation at all. Just get it in, bolt it in, clamp it in, mark up where we need to remove the e-coat along the different areas, mark up the areas we need to plug weld because there's one or two areas I just can't possibly spot weld because I can't get to both sides. For example, the lip on the bottom of the bulkhead there, I can't get either side. So that'll be plug welded from below for neatness. Um, so yeah, that's the idea. Get it in, get it marked up and then get it back out get all the areas cleaned up, any plug hole, uh, plug weld holes drilled, and then finally apply some weld through primer to the areas that it needs it, along the edges, etc. And then finally get it back in the last time today, clamped in place, couple of bolts here and there, and leave it at that, ready for welding in another day. So I won't be doing any welding today, but I will, I do hope to get it at least in the car and ready to weld in. I'm going to try my best not to do what I always, always do, which is, I say I'm going to take my time with stuff, I'll just do it here and there, and before I know it, I've set, I've set, I've set myself a daft target to have something done by a certain time, and then I have to work longer hours to achieve that target, because I will not miss targets. But yeah, I need to stop doing that, I need to just uh, work away at it, and uh, it gets done when it gets done, rather than... Um, Rather than set and see targets, which I've done my whole life, I did it with the Escort all the time, I did it with the Mini all the time, I'll set these targets, and uh, yeah, it ends up being a bit of a rush to try and get stuff done for your target. But at the same time, it's got to be done right, so you're trying to do both at the same time, quality and working quicker, which isn't ideal. I'd rather just take my time and enjoy it, which is what I'm going to do today. So let's get cracking. I'll let you see it along the different points of fitting the boot floor. Well, guys, I have heard people saying that are far more experienced than myself at this kind of thing, that the genuine pressings aren't what they used to be. But this is a mega, mega impressive fit. I haven't manipulated this at all. I've literally bolted it in with four bolts on the subframe mounting points, a couple of clamps in the inside, I'll show you inside in a second. But watch how it just follows every single contour absolutely beautifully. I mean, you can't ask for any better than that for first fit up, you really can't. That's that's really, really pleased me that as today. I mean, even things like the hole for the bumper mount in the corner still lines up absolutely perfectly. The middle one does as well. You know, this one's gone, so I can't I can't tell, but it looks like it would mount perfectly as well. It's just absolutely fantastic. And if we go inside, you'll see the theme continues. It follows everywhere. Absolutely bang on. Underneath, it sits against the heel board. Mega, mega pleased with that. Now it's time to start cleaning up. And we'll try and get it in uh, for the last time, ready for welding another day. That's my plan now. Right, guys, so there it is. As I mentioned earlier, it's been drilled uh, six mil holes all the way along. 
to fit up to the bottom of the rear bulkhead because as I mentioned, I can't get the spot welder in. They've both been primed up. The sides of the, you can just see there, the sides of the rear bins have been primed up. All the areas that come into contact have been sprayed with UPOL weld through primer. So now that floor is ready to go in. So I'm gonna get it lifted in, bolted in, clamped in, ready for welding another day. I'm not gonna weld it today, but at least it's in there ready for getting the subframe stripped down, bolted in to check for alignment, and then I can go and hit it with the welder and the uh, spot welder. So yeah, we're getting there. Right, there we go. That's the boot in for the last time. I'm ready to start welding, as you can see. We're all primed up in the joints. They haven't bothered around here because the arches are coming out afterwards, remember. They, them arches aren't staying in. So all this here, I have, I've have just clamped to it. I, I'm not doing any prep to that edge yet because I'll do that when we replace each individual arch. But that is absolutely spot on. Or at least it will be spotted on eventually when I get round to the welding side of things, hopefully in the next week or so. Uh, I'll just give you a quick view from the inside. And there you go. Just a couple of clamps here and there. I really need some more of them long clamps there that you can see at the far side. I could do with another two of them. I've only got two. I could really do with another two. But we'll get there. We'll get there. So yeah, that's all, uh, all ready to start. Spot welding and plug welding in, dressing in, and yeah, we're uh, it's nice to get some strength back into the car. But another thing that's really nice is to get this boot floor into the car rather than taking room up in the garage because it was a big package. So that's a massive that's a massive positive for me getting that floor in. The fact that I've got more room in the garage now, but yeah, that is an impressive fit. That floor, I'm very, very happy at this stage. So, Mark, the owner of this uh, mini, has been buying some bits and bobs that we'll need in the coming months, especially when it comes to reassembly. Uh, a lot of these parts won't be needed right away, but we've started getting them together. So, we've got new seals for the rear lights, that's for the lenses. We're also going to get the ones, the rubber ones, that go between the light cluster and the body. Uh, we've got a new battery clamp, all the bolts, etc. that hold the battery clamp in place because the battery didn't actually have a clamp on. So we're going to sort that out while it's, uh, while it's getting done. We've got a new set of bolts to hold the subframe into the car because the original ones were so rotten that if I tried using them, they would simply strip the threads in the heel board. They were absolutely awful. So we've got a nice new set of bolts, all eight for bolting the subframe in. We've got a new fuel filter. This is actually an MPI fuel filter, but the car's been converted to run the MPI fuel filter instead of the SPI. So we'll fit that on the subframe after it's been powder coated. The subframe's currently got uh, still over braided hoses, which have been really poorly fitted with cable ties and stuff. So we're gonna go back to originality and fit the original rubber ones. We've got all the washers and nuts, etc., to fit them as well. We've got these little seam strips. Now these go at the bottom of your rear quarter, behind your, behind your rear wheel arch, there's like a little uh, seam strip that fits between the rear wheel arch and the rear seam for your bumper. That's what they're for. We've also got the little clips that fit them on. They'll be fitted during the paint stages. And we've got the proper um, pop rivets for fitting the plastic wheel arches back on. These pop off at less pressure so they don't crack your wheel arches. A lot of people make the mistake, I've just found out recently, of fitting normal ones and they crack the wheel arch because they put too much pressure on the plastic. So these are the proper ones for fitting plastic arches. So yeah, that's just a couple of bits Mark's got ready for the Mini in the coming months. Let's get cracking with today's work. Right, today's job then. So you'll have seen the boot floors in. A uh, bit of footage just before there. It's in and ready to start welding in. But before we get it in, I want to bolt the subframe in. Before I start welding in, I want to put the subframe in to make sure that the fixing points between the heel board down there and the boot floor are all perfectly aligned. I've got no reason to believe there won't be, but it's best to be safe than sorry. Now, to help putting this subframe in and out the car, I'm going to strip it down. By that I mean the radius arms, the corns. Leave the bracketry on, that hot it into the car, but strip the rest down because these are the main weight parts in a rear subframe, your radius arms and your drum assemblies. It's going to be getting powder coated, so it will need stripped down. So I may as well do it now and make it easier for lifting in and out the car so that's the next job. I'm going to strip this subframe down, get it in the car, get it bolted in with the new bolts you've just seen. And then we can look at starting to weld the floor in with this in place. And then we know everything is absolutely perfectly aligned. Right, well, that's one mucky job out the way. 
just have a look how much grease from the radius arms is sitting down in that corner which at least means it has been you know it has been well serviced and looked after which kind of new anyways so yeah that's the subframe stripped down it's nice and light and there's all our bits that will all be cleaned up powder coated or painted i think the little rubber boots for the handbrakes the little handbrake gaiters they need replaced they're all perished we're replacing the uh the hoses as you already know a lot of the rest is good to go again it's all in pretty good condition just needs a good clean up and paint even the shockers don't look that old they've still got the uh still got the stickers on so yeah they'll go again a lot of that will go again but the subframe obviously needs a bloody good blast and a powder coat because it's in a really terrible state considering it's not that old so anyways we'll get it in the car now get it bolted in see how we get on hopefully everything lines up which i expect it should and then uh, we can start getting that boot floor, boot floor welded in well guys that's the subframe bolted in it went in no problem just a little bit of jiggly porkery like you always have to when you're fitting the mini subframes bolted in at the front with the new bolts bolted in at the back both sides and as you can see so that's all gone in nice that obviously means everything's now aligned nicely which I expected anyways. So next, we're gonna get on with spot welding the top lip of the heel board to the boot floor and spot welding the boot floor to the rear bins. I'll show you a little bit of that inside shortly. Well guys, as you can see, that is the rear seat pan, all spot welded in to both the rear bins. And if I just come closer, you'll be able to see Spot welds running all the way along, around about every inch, which is more than it was previously. But I'd rather put more than less all the way to the end and then again across the bin as well. So that's that bit done. And my back is absolutely broke, it really is. Because if anybody wants a workout without going to the gym, just get yourself a spot welder. Seriously, get yourself a spot welder. Jesus Christ. Talk about back break and work. They are so heavy and clumbersome. And when you're trying to get them into the right angle, you don't have to feel your back twinge, it's horrible. But yeah, that's a, that's a fantastic step forward now. Um, next section, uh, sorry, the next um, bit of footage rather, will be that seam there from the rear bulkhead. And I need to plug weld that from underneath all the way along, because obviously I can't get in with the uh, spot welder for that. So yeah, that'll be the next bit of footage. One thing I have noticed guys, and thankfully I've remembered about it, is this lip here, which gives you your support for your rear seat. That's also been spot welded in the middle by the way, I forgot to mention that before. But it's very flimsy, and I thought I'm sure there's supposed to be like a, a strengthener that runs along this edge. Well thankfully, I didn't throw away the old floor pan. Because as you can see, this is the old floor pan. There's a lip that runs all the way along the front. That's just spot welded on so i'm gonna have to gently remove that and spot weld it onto the new floor pan or seat pan rather to give it its strength now that's actually bent a little bit with the strength in it they were never great to be honest but yeah i will need to fit that because i don't want that back uh, seat section bending in future but yeah that's just more work to do and uh a bit more work i was un unaware of anyways but uh it needs done so we'll have to get it swapped over Right guys, so we're into another day, and today's job is to get this rear bulkhead welded to the boot floor along the bottom seam that you will have all seen in previous videos, along these seams to these strengtheners, both sides, bit of jacking up to do there, get the welds put in place, back down that, these diagonals on this strengthener for the seat belt mount, and get all them welds linished back. That means I'm going to have to take the subframe out to get at some of them, to lynch them back, and then we'll put the subframe back in again afterwards. So yeah, I'll hopefully show you a little bit of the welding today, because I've got a little bit more time. We'll see how we get on, but yeah, that's, uh, that's today's task. If I get that far today, I'll be quite happy. Little baby steps, as they say. So just a little bit about welding and welder settings. <clears throat> Every MIG welder that you may use, even if you had the same model as this, I don't doubt that the settings will be very slightly different. For this one here, which is a Clark 195, for run CO2 and argon gas. 
the plug welds I generally go for setting three on the power and generally just under three for wire feed but I always find when you're welding uphill it's always a good thing just to turn your wire feed up a little bit more to, uh, to act against gravity and that sometimes helps you um, so also you need a good welding mask that goes without saying uh, this is a Lincoln Electric one I got last Christmas because I was fed up of getting the cheap £50 ones and they're not lasting five minutes and it's a good idea to wear gauntlet type gloves I'll be honest I don't wear them I uh, I can't stand things on my hands my hands tend to get burnt and uh, welding sometimes as they say but uh, I, I just can't wear them I can't I, I don't mind wearing PPE but I cannot wear gloves so it's personal preference so let's get cracking I'll try and show you a bit of footage of getting some of these spot welds in place right guys this is quite difficult to record even more difficult to do with the camera in front of me but basically you can see there we have a six mil hole and in behind that six mil hole is the lip of the bulkhead and what we're looking to do is pull the trigger and basically start in the middle and just do basically a circular motion on each one of them plug welds and they'll hopefully fill in nice they don't always fill in nice but you've got to try your best it's really awkward working upside down i'm struggling here to be honest i'd love the car in a spit like i had the escort but unfortunately the car is fully built up with the engine in and it's not getting stripped down to put a boot floor in so yeah you do get better results when you're comfortable and when you can see what you're doing i've got a light shining on this I'm not particularly comfortable, but I'll give it a whirl and see how it goes. So bear with me guys, because this is quite tricky. And if I zoom in, I'll be able to show you. There you go, see? It's just basically uh, nice flat, it's good penetration. That's what you're aiming for as you go along. So yeah, that's pretty much it guys for plug welds. Right, so some of you will remember from earlier episodes that there was welds down each of these faces to basically hold this strengthener to the boot floor to give more strength for your seatbelt points. So this is a nice easy one to get at. It's a nice easy one to film. So I thought I'd uh, get a bit of welding on camera because I appreciate I haven't got as much of the actual doing of the work on film as I would like. Mainly down to the fact that time constraints and me trying to get as much done as I can in a day. But anyways, let me, um, let me weld these few fa uh, faces up and you can come along for the ride. So basically we're still on setting three and we're going to go on and off the trigger this time. This section here is around about 2mm steel, but we're welding to 0.8. So if we just go full trigger, we'll probably make a mess and blow holes. So this time we'll go on and off the trigger as we do with car body work generally. Smoky, smoky. Right, let me clean this up with a wire brush and I'll let you see the finished welds. And there you all go guys, all nicely welded back in. Lots of strength, lots of penetration. 
just as it was originally probably better welds than they were originally to be fair but yeah happy with that i don't remember the edges being welded i may go back through the footage and see if these edges were welded um can't remember that but i'll have a little look now and if it needs done i'll do it right when i think about it i'm nearly certain them sides were so i've went ahead i went ahead and welded them up as well that's another little bit out the way we're really getting on now with welding this boot floor in and there is all them plug welds linish back that run through to the rear bulkhead some people will probably be wondering why i didn't weld from above plug weld down but i just thought it would be a neater job doing it this way because the lip on the bulkhead although it's in very very good condition it's older steel this is new steel and i like welding through new steel onto old i find that gets a better results from experience that's the reason i've did it on my back underneath rather than in comfort inside the car so yeah happy with that all dressed back nicely i can now get the subframe back in and I'm going to get these valent closing panels um, bolted in place. The back all cleaned off with some weld through primer on. Get them fitted at the same time. And there we go guys. There's the view from the inside. All nicely tucked down to the boot floor. It's gone in really nice that. Really happy with that. Right. That's it. Back in with the subframe there's the valance closing panels they actually go under the brackets for the rear subframe mounts hence the reason why i've put them in now and cleaned both sides so they can now be spot welded in with the actual spot welder because i'll be able to get both sides whenever i'm ready first of all i'll need to offer up the rear valance to make sure they're in the right place same with the other side so yeah that's uh, a little step forward next up on the next time i'm in the garage we're going to be doing this boot hinge panel so this is a lot more accessible you'll be able to see a lot more of what i'm doing with that i'm not underneath welding on my back which i'm delighted about so yeah we're going to get this section in all the way along here which involves taking measurements making sure the boot lid fits perfectly and then we've got the tank support bracket to put in little tabs for the wiring loom uh, odds and sods like that and then the rear valance can go in and then that's the back end really almost back to where we were when we started which is fantastic and then we'll have to obviously move on to both rear arches yeah we're finally getting there i can see light at the end of the tunnel now right guys today's the day we're going to replace this boot hinge panel as you can see the state of it it's it's fiberglass it's filler there's a hole there where they had the clamp just holding it down and the clamp sunk right through shows exactly what it's made of so this is coming out so what i've done is i put some masking tape on with a pen line on the ridge and i've took a measurement from that pen line down to the edge of this ridge here in line with the outer boot hinge hole and both sides we get exactly 440 mil both sides so when I put the new panel in, I just need to make sure that's exactly 440 mil from the pen line. And then we know we've got the right height. Now, width wise, it shouldn't alter because this curve will, will keep it in the right place. But I've also took a measurement between this pen line and this pen line. And we've got a measurement of around about 954 to 955 mil between pen lines so it's just another reference point i can refer back to to make sure we're not making any mistakes i will fit the boot lid before we fully weld it to make sure it closes nice and the lines are all good but uh yeah i'll hopefully try and show you some of the stages of replacing this boot hinge panel right guys quick update all i've done so far is i've trimmed 10 mil off the new panel because it come very close to this corner at this edge rather of the light um of the light cut out and i didn't like that so i've cut it down just 10 mil to bring it slightly further down as you can see the holes for the boot lid line up absolutely perfectly i've put bolts through two of them clamped it in place and now all i'm going to do is scribe onto the original body just above the new section on both sides to allow me then to cut to the lower edge of that line it's better 
cutting too little out and too much you can always uh give it a little tickle with the grinder afterwards to get a little bit more out but you can't well you can add back in but it's hard harder work and more time consuming so it's best to get it right to start with so that's that guys next thing i'm going to do is chop out the old one which will be nice because then we'll get rid of that horrible mess underneath that new panel so that's the plan now we're going to scribe that up nicely as neatly as possible i've took measurements as well i've took measurements back to this edge at the minute it's four four one four four two so it's about two mil out but this panel needs to drop in it needs to drop that way and i'm confident when it does that it'll be exactly 440 so yeah let's get uh scribing and cutting just a quick view of our scribe lines before i go and carefully cut it out and you can see i've got a nice line to follow i've just got to be very careful and cut that out nicely to the line or just below the line right that's our panel removed cut nicely to them lines there it is the old knackered section or part of it so now let's get this new section clamped in and let's see how right or wrong <laughs> i've got it well well more than happy with that look how the contours follow see how the curve matches up nicely now this is only the second time i've used these little blocks the last time i used them the first time i used them rather i wasn't too impressed with them this time i'm, I'm really impressed with them it must just be the application they're only good for certain applications they hold that beautifully now i've done the measurements and we're one mil too far out too uh, too low so we need to come up a millimeter which is perfect but we need to come up a millimeter but that's nice and easy because all we have to do is a very light trim and i say trim i mean surface grind on some of the edges where they're a bit uh, close in the corners and that should come up and get us bang on 440. so yeah i am absolutely over the moon with that i really am that's a fantastic first fit up so what's to do now is i've got to take it back off clean up them or grind back them little edges to get us, us up a little bit further to, to hit our 440 mil I've got to take all the black coating off in between these sections here so on the bottom of this lip and on the top lip of the boot of the boot floor I've got to uh, take them back to bare metal apply weld through primer to both and I also need to carefully dress back the paint on the edge all the way around here on the blue section and on the black section the new bit both sides dress all that up ready for welding so the next time you see this panel in I'll have done all that boring stuff. It'll be clamped back in again with these little clamps. And then, hopefully, our measurements will be absolutely bang on. We can tack it in place, bolt our boot lid on, make sure it aligns properly. Once we're happy the boot lid's in the right, uh, in the right alignment, we can then weld it fully and clean the welds back. So, yeah, let's see how far we get today, but uh, I'm happy with it so far. Just a little bit of footage to show the degree of cleaning back that e-coat before we apply our uh, U-Pole Weld Through Primer and also along that edge for welding and the more time you spend cleaning in between seams up the better time you'll have when it comes to spot welding because if you don't get all this coating off you've got a heavy spot welder in your hand and it just will not spot It'll, it just buzzes at you and, it, and uh, you, do, you end up getting frustrated and you have to split it again to make sure it's perfectly bare the weld through primer is no problem but the black uh, e coating causes problems for spot welding so let's get this panel in for what will hopefully be the last time i must be absolutely quackers i mean things you've got to do to make your paint dry quicker right we're ready for welding i'll show you that fit up now look at that absolutely beautiful absolutely spot on both sides same again got a little slight bigger gap there in the corner but that's absolutely no problem yeah i am more than happy with that and better still the measurements are now absolutely millimeter perfect both ways so now what we're going to do is we're going to put maybe four or five tacks either side so we can release the clamps we're then going to apply the boot lid, 
line this hole up because you just need to pull that out that pulls out quite easy put a clamp on and then make sure the boot lid closes nicely and all the gaps are right before we go and fully weld it so let's get cracking with that now right guys that's a couple of tacks applied follows nice round all the way same on the other side so now we're going to get the boot lid on and hope that it fits as well as it should well i'm calling that a success because we've got nice even lines all the way around it's equal all the way along the top it's equal all the way down the side it's flush it's equal along the bottom I've actually got pictures of how this boot lid fitted before I started, so I'm going to compare them now. But I think that is a win. I really do. I'm, uh, I'm quite happy with that. Just to show you from the side, it follows the contours. Yeah. Time to get this fully welded, I think. And by the way, I forgot to say... That's the boot fitted with the seal on as well. You've got to you've got to fit the boot seal to make sure your gaps are right. And as you can see, there's the seal, the gap at the bottom, and you'll see how easy it closes nicely. So yeah, I'm definitely calling that a success. I've just looked back at the photos and it fits entirely the same as it did originally. So let's get this fully welded. And there it is, all welded in. It welded in really nicely actually, no issues at all. And I was doing it on set and free, and the same applies to both sides. So now I'll hopefully try and show you a little bit of the dressing back footage, plenishing back these welds stage by stage, how I do it myself, uh, and let you see just exactly how the processes I go through to hopefully get these welds completely invisible stage one grinding disc just a simple grinding disc Just an example as to where you want to be after stage one all you want to do with that grinding disc is just remove the bulk of the material but don't touch down into the surrounding steel because it'll just dig in and uh, make a mess so yeah you're only looking to take off the bulk material to make it easier for stage two stage two And after stage two, as you can see, we're nearly there. We're nearly invisible. And stage three just helps perfect the look because it's a bit of a, a rough look there with the uh, sharp grinding contour, uh, compounds. Another thing that's worth mentioning is getting into little corners, like in that corner there, you, you struggle to get into tight corners with grinding discs. So what I tend to do, and a favourite method of mine, is just to use a 1mm slitting disc and just gently tickle away at the corner and you'll get right into the corner, into the sharp corner, because obviously 1mm discs are very thin. So yeah, let's get on to stage 3. Stage 3! And for areas 
up to the corners inside this seam a drill with various different grinding and uh, cutting bits is ideal just to get them into small corners And there we go, 99% invisible, there's one or two little bits I could have took down a bit further but I'm perfectly happy with that, as you can see up into the uh, corners it's dressed in really nice too, same goes for the other side, that's gone exactly the same, really happy with that, what a difference that's made, we've now got the beautiful strong one piece steel boot hinge panel instead of a mixture of steel fiberglass and filler that's that's absolutely brilliant that's a massive massive step forward with this project it really is well guys that's not exactly where i wanted to finish this episode i did hope to finish this episode on having the rear valance fitted and then that would kind of you know button up the back end and we could move on to the rear arches but unfortunately i was uh looking at the video footage as i was uh editing and I thought I've got far too much footage here it's going to end up too long so unfortunately I'm going to end the video here guys and we'll go on to the valance at the start of the next episode and then obviously the rear arches so yeah I'm really really pleased with how it's went in this episode I'm, I'm really pleased I can see light at the end of the tunnel now and um, for use anybody watching who works in the kind of the body shop uh, or the restoration kind of sector if you've got any tips for how you do, how you dress back, because that's just my my way of uh, dressing welds back. But if you guys have got any better ideas, better tools, better um, procedures for doing it, please feel uh, free to share them. I'm always looking to uh, pick up new tips and tricks off people that's been in the trade uh, and have got a lot more experience than I have. So yeah, thanks very much for watching, guys. As always, and I'll see you very very so uh, soon when we'll be picking up where we left off in this episode. Thanks for watching guys.